Okay, so now that we are done with our design, we need to go to our main activity and reference our views. So I'm going to go to our main activity. So here I'm going to define instances of our views. So the first will be our button. And we're going to call it get weather button. So the next will be to define our test views. And the first will be our place test. Then the next will be temperature test view. So the next will be weather description test view. And the next will be the city name edit test. And also we're going to declare our image view, the weather image view. So the next thing will be to go ahead and reference these views that we've just defined, the one in our layout design, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and say city name edit test will be equal to edit test find view by ID resource the ID dot city name test. Boom. Okay. So this is one of the issues that we keep having in Visual Studio 2019. Okay. So to fix that, we're going to go ahead and build our project. So this was supposed to be CT name test. So everything has been resolved. So let's continue. So the next will be to reference our place test view, which we test view, find view by ID, resource the ID dot place test. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for temperature test view. Okay. It seems we didn't define this ID in our design. So we're going to go to our activity main XML. We're going to try to fix that. So here we're going to define the ID. So we're going to call this temperature test view. Okay, so we're going to return to our main activity. So when we build our project, this will go ahead and resolve. So the next will be our weather description test view. Okay, so the next will be to reference our button, our get weather button. All right, and finally, we're going to go ahead and reference our weather image view as well. So I'm going to copy this. I keep it here just to keep things really organized. So the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and add a click event listener for our weather button. So I'm going to say get weather button and tab. Boom. So we now have our weather button click event handler. So at this point, the next thing we need to do will be to go to openweather.org to get our API key. So I'm going to be showing us how to do that in the next class. So see you there. So what we want to do now is to get access to an API that will provide us with our weather information. So to be able to do that, we're going to go to openweathermap.org. So I'm going to log on to this website. Boom. So Open Weather is a platform that provides an API that fetches current weather and forecast in your city. So as you can see here, they have a beautiful implementation of their API. So all the data that you have seen here, we can also access through an API that they have provided for public usage. So to be able to use their API, we we'll first of all need to sign up and acquire an API key. So we're going to click on sign up. And this is where we need to register. So I'm going to go ahead and register you, Phoenix. So I'm going to impute our email address. Then we're going to use a password. And we're going to go ahead and agree to their privacy terms. And of course, I'm not a robot. Okay, so in case um, this capture pops up, Go ahead and ensure that you get verified. I'm going to do this pretty quickly. Okay, so I'm actually not a robot. I'm going to go ahead and click on create account. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up and click on save. Boom. So our account has been created. As you can see, hello, you Phoenix. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to click on setup. Okay, so then we're going to click on API keys. It has already generated an API key for us. So this is the key that we're going to be using to communicate with Open Weather Map API. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. So now that we have our API keys, we need to know the available APIs that we can actually call. So I'm going to go ahead and click on API. So as you can see, the Open Weather Map has a lot of APIs that you can implement. 
So they have current weather data, hourly forecast, 16 day daily forecast. So they have a lot. Okay. So you can go ahead and choose anyone you possibly might want to implement later on. But for the sake of the app we are building, we are only concerned about the current weather data. So we're going to go ahead and click on the API documentation so that we can see how to effectively implement this API. So this is an example of how you can implement the API. So you can fetch the current weather condition of a city by using the city name. So this is the API call that you can make and you need to pass it a parameter of the city name. So you can fetch the current weather condition using a city name. And also you can do that using a city ID if you liked. So this is an example of using a city ID. And also you can fetch weather conditions using geographical coordinates as well. All right. And they put example for each of them. But for the sake of the app you're building, we are going to be making use of city names. So you can go ahead and see how they implemented this API by clicking on this link. Boom. So this is how the API was implemented. This is the result or the response that's come from the API. So what we are going to be doing is that we are going to go ahead and implement the API in our app and also accept JSON response, which is what we see here. And when we receive the response, we're going to go ahead and pass the JSON response and be able to select the temperature of the place, um, the place name and even the country code and also the weather description. So these are all we are going to be doing in the next lesson. So guys, see you in the next class.